Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have back good brother and mensch, Eli Weber, Kabbalah guru. We haven't talked to him in a while, so we're looking forward to talking to our brother in Christ in the, in the Jewish camp to kind of see what his life is up to, how things are going for him and his respective uh, community with all of you, and we'll give him an appraisal of what we have on our end as always. Please do like, subscribe, and share if you haven't done so, so already so that the channel continue to grow and others will get the knowledge that you are currently afforded. Mr. Eli, how you doing, brother? Thanks, John. We're doing great. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I had a little technical things there, but yeah, we're, we, we just moved to Arizona. We bought some property and we're trying to sort of homestead and uh, we're we're kind of absorbed with that. That's why I'm, I'm hoping you'll uh, inform me. I told John before that the only thing I really feel pretty sure about is that they have to crash the, at least the market. I think the economy is already in crash mode. I mean, in terms yeah. of the inflation and everything else, you can't really do anything right now. So, except it, I think, you know, there. I, the, here's a kind of a slant on this. The, I think that if you're in the mindset of, not really working with the matrix of working beyond the matrix and kind of a more of a godly creative sense. We're having a lot of success with manifestation, let's say. I mean, things just seem to appear even in my banking account, which is quite remarkable to me. And, you know, I could detail that a bit. But we're, so we, we've been focused on we moved uh, from New York City and it took us, it was very hard, a very hard uh, passage because we were, tra we were traveling with a trailer, a 3,000 pound trailer, and it burned out two vehicles or a, one vehicle fell apart. It wasn't really what it was supposed to be. The other vehicle just burned out from the, the trailer. We had to like trash it in New Mexico, but we uh, we got here and that was the main thing. We, we've been here for a couple of weeks now and We've seen the land that we bought. We bought 170 acres in the mountains, sight unseen. <laughs> and the roads going there are, uh, let's say they're they're exciting. You know, the roads are very exciting. It's a very uh, thrilling <laughs> ride to the property. But we're so we're, we and we bought a trailer recently, so we're we're hoping to get up there soon. And it's really it's just nice to be in the sunshine here. I mean, we're we're really enjoying the sunshine the new views and the vibes are quite different from New York city. So we're enjoying that, but I've Danielle and I've been sort of very much focused on this settling this new environment. So I, I I'm out of the loop. I, like I said to John, the only thing that I feel quite certain about is that the economy has to go down during uh, Biden's uh, administration and I was listening to X-22 report. I want to give credit to, to where I get it, but I don't usually listen to Dave that much lately for, for years. I, I used to listen to him religiously. But he said that um, just like Obama, before Obama was elected, the economy completely tanked, that there will be a revisit. And I think in a sort of spiritual sense, that this is an important aspect to this whole thing in that all the the timeline, the major points in the timeline have to be kind of revisited. So mm -hmm. just like Ob before Obama was elected, there was this crash in the economy, there must be a repeat of that same kind of situation but this time it will happen under biden so the, the issue is on the other foot and in order for us as a conscious collective stream to correct that time defect of where obama got away with literally murder i mean in, in some you know that's a strong word to use but he he definitely manipulated the system to his advantage the whole crash of 2008 so just as as the election i believe the election itself the timeline involving the election has to be corrected in that we have to re-elect uh trump in a way that is repairs the the uh situation that happened in 2016 like we have to revisit that same power and i also think we need we we will be revisiting the 9-11 date again. All mm -hmm. these points have to be revisited, all these major timelines, because 
in my view, and I'm not really sure I can explain what I mean by this, but in my view, time has been manipulated in order to to induce fear in us, and that most I'm 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 as I explore my own consciousness, I think that most of the fear-based thoughts I have revolve around time. Like I need to do this by a certain time, or I don't do this by a certain time. Everything's going to go, you know, and, but, but outside of that kind of fear-based timeline that the enemy uses to program and manipulate us there, I think there are real like timeline points, like points along the timeline that are, that need to be corrected need to be fixed repaired in order for us to advance as a, as a collective so I, I i do think that we will see a repeat of the obama crash under biden and that you know this will be a kind of a repair of that particular spot in time yeah definitely well before we get into my whole portion of it what uh what do you guys been up to on your channel what's kind of been the main mainstay or what's been the primary focus for you guys at this point because i haven't been in the loop myself to be honest so i was broadcasting two to three times a day quite religiously for the last couple of years i've stopped doing that when we started traveling we've stopped doing that and i'm basically putting out shorter videos that just focus on one particular point or two particular points and releasing them trying to build up from all the negative negativity and real destructive forces from like youtube from being crashed from losing 10 youtube channels and losing my livelihood just like i lost my livelihood from the department of education when i refused the vax but i, I don't know if you know, you remember but this susan wajiki i think it is yes from youtube the ceo yeah, she, just she, died she's responsible for all this censorship and she died so mm -hmm. i mean I'm at least at least we're alive um, to uh, to deal with this. At least you know we, I lost my livelihood, but I'm still alive, so I'm I'm grateful for that. Definitely, and her her son also died as well. So um, I, I still brought them up. Sure, no worries. I I just cut it for a minute so we can come back. Um, yeah, her um, her son died recently as well, so. We're definitely in a, a changing of the guard to your point with leadership. And um, and as I've mentioned to our audience in the past, and this is not something I enjoy or anything like that. It's just an unfortunate reality. But the cabal uses a lot of these uh, feminist or Jezebelian type women in false positions of CEO power like this woman to do their bidding. And once they've achieved that, then they either fire them or in the extreme case i think we have a pretty good idea what, what how this death resulted they get rid of them and so um that's why we need to protect women and and we need we need to rebalance or god is rebalancing i believe eli in the season the order where men are back in their germanic natural roles and women in their feminine roles and and of course the enemy uses language of manipulation feminism versus feminine are not the same thing right like the color of law versus law language matters and the enemy knows that and he tries to use it against people but god is going to restore this natural balance and we <clears throat> as men as leaders need to protect obviously our women respectively and and nurture them back into their proper roles where they really are best able to flourish as a sidebar to what we're discussing so um i guess that's my cue <laughs> to give you some updates so I'll try to give you the condensed version. This is more for your audience because my audience is already very savvy and up to speed and I'm, yours is too. It's just a matter of filling in the blanks. But um, we're at a very important point, uh, Eli. We're in August, the month of new beginnings. I don't know if you saw on our Telegram channel, but I posted this some time ago. I was actually looking for it uh, while you stepped away for a moment. But uh, the UN is, you're talking about timelines. Well, I think that's a good place to start. Uh, the UN has acknowledged that they're shifting back to a 13-month calendar. So we're going to start getting back the time that we've lost. They basically, the cabal has stolen time from us, uh, you know, a couple days every month, each month. It starts to add up and into over a month of time. And we're going to be getting that back because um, we heard from somebody in our camp that we respect quite a bit, uh, Prophetess Rosalind Solomon. And she had alluded to the fact that 
when the assassination attempt against President Trump was foiled, thankfully, uh, that God is restoring time. Yeshua is restoring, restoring time back to the people uh, because the Bible says that we're going to get the time, God's people will get the time and the money that the locusts, in this case, the cabal, stole. So we're, you're absolutely right when you talk about a time transference and a readjustment. We're, it, I mean, it was occurring to me the other day in my walk in the, in the field that you know I do, um, I don't know if you've ever felt like this, and maybe some of the audience can relate, but sometimes you feel like, I don't know if I was born the right time, you know, because my morals and values are so juxtaposed against the current society. But God is going to be correcting that with the timelines. And in doing so, I think we're going to go back to the 1950s with a, in the sense of morals and value, pricing of things. Um, we've reported on our channel with many, many other people. We've had a lot of um, you know, financial subject matter experts in the old economic system that know that world pretty well have admitted what we have been talking about on our team for years, which is to say, and this will be good news for you and your audience, we're going to see an, a 90 plus percent correction in real estate. We're already going to seeing a 95 percent in commercial real estate here in California. I'm seeing malls and businesses dry up left and right, and that's going to present new opportunities for home-based or, or rather family mom and pop shop businesses like the Supretz that you grew up with in New York that I was familiar with when I lived there. And I can relate to your move because you talked about a 16 year cycle with the economy. I had a 16 year cycle. I moved out here late August, September of 08. And so now I'm moving back the other way. So we're, you and I are sort of crossing paths, so to speak, um, <clears throat> logistically. So we're definitely in that cycle of time is my point. But we're going to be moving back we believe to a standard of, of a better time, morals and values, modesty, uh, pricing, um, you know, all kinds of therapies, med beds, and many, many other things that are gonna revolutionize the way that we live and govern and do business. And you and I will be able to do peer-to-peer -peer banking. So we won't have to go through <clears throat> the bank anymore. That's gonna be phased out. I basically tell people in easiest layman's terms right now, if you took Zelle or PayPal or whatever you use and just drop the bank, that's how we're going to work. And it's going to be used to the, the blockchain system we just saw last week, XRP won their case, as you're probably aware, uh, $125 million settlement, which is kind of bogus, but it, it's a, a small price to pay for Brad Garlinghouse because of where XRP is going to be positioned in the very near future. All we're waiting for now is for the SEC to admit what we already know, that they're not going to appeal it. I think that settlement of the payment was part of the concession to not appeal. They have a two month window to answer. I, I don't think they're gonna wait that long. I think it'll be somewhere between now and September. What a coincidence, as there are none. We have September, they're gonna drop the interest rates a half a percent, and that's gonna to start to teeter off the old system, just like you were saying in the beginning of this um, discussion, uh, we're gonna repeat the 16 year cycle, but in reverse for God's people are gonna be in a great position um, the rest of the world that is living in their own sort of sinful way, not so much, but we have to go through this, Eli, to, to burn off and attrition the old world that we came from to go into this new exciting realm that we all want to enter. We have to go through this process. So if everyone is prepared accordingly, you shouldn't be concerned. You should be actually quite excited. And if you've changed your mindset and your frequency, therefore, as you know, um, it, it's quite exhilarating. It's quite exciting because we're all here to help each other cross that proverbial finish line. It's part of why we do these shows, right? So that's one example. Um, interesting touch point to your heritage in Israel. We're waiting for Israel. And, and we know this is a script, right? But this is part of the narrative. We're waiting for Israel to get that final attack this weekend, as we understand it. Um, Iran fired off about 30 weak missiles, not hitting any major touch points that we can ascertain. <clears throat> no casualties that we're aware of, thank God. Um, but that was kind of a, a weak attack. We're waiting for a stronger attack from, it, from Iran to hit Israel, and then Israel will counterstrike those secret nuclear power plants. Either that, uh, Eli, or another alternative or option is that the U.S. military, which is wholly based in Iraq, as you know, in many other countries throughout the world, like they did with Daesh, they will do a, a counterinsurgency attack on the power plants of Iran, blame Israel for it. Everyone will look at Israel, and then Iraq can take center stage, because what we have now is Sudani getting ready to get rid of uh, the central bank governor, who is an Iranian proxy holdover, 
he's going to bring in his own person who will be a Iraqi native. And that is what is needed along with passing the hydrocarbon gas law, which has 150 laws tucked in underneath it. And when that happens, they're going to bring the small notes and coins. They're going to, they've got to uh, get rid of the currency auctions. That's where the lion's share of the money laundering of the US dollar has been going on. You cut the, the proverbial head of the snake off and then it has no more life supply. So there's a whole cacophony of things that are kind of going on at the same time, right? Uh, so that's basically Iraq in a nutshell, since I think both of our audiences are pretty aware of the, the genesis of this. You have the China-Taiwan situation about to be give birth optically. The sham of the Olympics, thankfully, is finally over with all the satanic symbolism that went on there that we're well aware it was just disgusting. But that's the cabal showing their hand because they don't have a war. So now everything has to be pushed to the middle for everyone to see. So we're waiting for China-Taiwan to happen. And again, that's you know enough of a communism removal for Vietnam to take center stage with the dong to come back because we believe they're kind of kind of go domino effect hand in hand. What's also exciting, Eli, is that next week there's a protest going on in Zimbabwe this week, the 16th and 17th. Next week they have the elections coming up and that's Nelson Chamisa we've said before, who is a Zimbabwe native, who is a Christian, who is wholly dedicated to bringing his country back like Trump. He's the Trump of that area. He's the people's choice. And he's already set up uh, right out front openly to the public. When I'm back, we're going to remove the corruption. We're going to return your sovereignty. And we're going to return the gold standard to all of your bonds and currencies under the ZIG. The ZIG is the new sort of financial haven for Zimbabwe to take center stage. So we got all that going on. We've got XRP. We've got in September, they're going to drop the interest rate at least a half a percent. They priced it in, I think, September 18th and 19th. So basically about a month from now. And that goes right in line with what you were saying, Eli. That would be almost 16 years to the day, if you recall. I know you were living in New York. I was just leaving there. Uh, the bank bailouts, which is you know just a money laundering Ponzi scheme. Uh, you had Lehman Brothers and all of that horrible situation. Uh, that's when you start to see the economy free fall. And you're right. They will let it fall on Biden and Harris and all that. And uh, we know that Trump is the commander in chief really running the show. So the question I always get was, if he's the leader, then why is this happening? Because people forget, most people don't have faith and vision. They only believe what they can see optically with their eyes. So like X-22 says, they must be shown. So that's going to be arranged so that the bulk of the normies can see it and there'll be no getting around it. Um, that's why, as always, we encourage people as best you can to become your own central bank and as a reprise. The best way to do that, simple things, have food and water, um, have silver if you can get it, gold even better, or a combination thereof, or even copper, it's fine. Um, build a buddy system with your neighbors, be in service, barter, start bartering now, don't wait for that event to happen, start doing it now. If you grow vegetables or you can sew or knit, trade your services. That's what my grandparents did in the 40s and it worked out quite well because they used to tell me about it. Um, you know, if you can get foreign currencies, great. If you don't, if you don't already have them, if you do, great. Um, you know, cryptos, again, just my personal thing. Uh, go to God and, and seek him, seek Yeshua for what, if he wants you to be in that. And if he does, he'll direct you. So just let him direct your path. So it's a pretty exciting time where we are, if you can see it in the correct, you know, lens of things. Um, and then I'll shut up about that. And I will show you something very exciting uh, so let me kind of set the story, the stage a little bit, because if I don't explain this, is people are going to be like, what does it mean? I'm, like, I'm doing this for two reasons. I'm doing this one to give the people, both of our audiences, exciting encouragement about where we're going as a point of proof. And it's also some of my audience have said, oh, I went on the Federal Reserve and I didn't see any change. So prove me wrong. Well, I wasn't aware that I had to prove any one person wrong or right. But just to, to quell the entire issue and kill two birds, we're going to do that today. So in 2022, so I had a business with a business partner who was not above board. So I dissolved the business. The IRS thought it was their right to be able to come back during after I call it bloated COVID and try to collect back money to the tune of $10,000. Um, I had not, uh, how do I explain this? I 
became an, a, a state national, no longer a citizen. But prior to that, I did not know about that. So I sent a letter to the IRS appeals court in LA to try to appeal it because I knew the whole thing was not, you know, that, that nobody as an individual, even a business or otherwise had to pay taxes because they have no law in the books that can, you know, prove it. It's by consent, right? So I sent the letter in February of 2022. I then learned about the national process, did such uh, in, accordingly, which for me took about to learn trial and error and get the right system took about, I don't know, a year and a quarter, year and a half to tweak it right, right? So then this June, I got a letter from the same tax court saying that they were absolving my case because in 22 and 23, I did soundly defeat the IRS. I basically wore them down and made them prove that there was a law and they couldn't do it. And they sent my case all over the country to different IRS locations, Memphis and Philadelphia and Kansas City, all that kind of stuff, only to bring it back to California and say, you, you know, we've resolved your case. And they kept asking me, by the way, Eli, for 90 days, they needed to stay. I'm like, when does the IRS ever ask you for more time? We're usually the ones that ask for that. So I knew something was up. So now we're in this year, June, they send me a letter. The tax court said, we've resolved your case. We're dropping it, but we need you to sign these letters. So then I called the attorney on file and I said, why do you need me to sign this if I've already defeated the IRS? He replied, well, you started the case with us. So we got to close the loophole. I said, okay, how do I know you're not going to you know, renege if I sign and put my name on it? Well, we've already signed off here. My manager approved it, and the judge is just waiting for this to get it off her books. True to his word, once I signed it, he sent me back on a digital copy online that proved the judge signed it. I've showed that in previous podcasts. It's on our Telegram, so I'll save you the, the burden of that. But what's interesting is I got a letter this weekend out of the blue from the Treasury, and that's what I'm going to share with you. So please let me know if you can see this. Can you see that? Yeah, I see it. Okay, so this, let me move it over so I can uh, see on my screen. So I've highlighted the appropriate areas. Obviously, I've blocked out my personal information. What I want you to guys to pay attention to, uh, Eli and audience, is this. It now says, instead of the Federal Reserve IRS, it says Department of Treasury Internal Revenue Service. Hmm. Look where it's located, Austin, Texas. Could that be where the new Treasury Department is, coupled with the reset for the currencies and everything else, that treasury is in Reno, Nevada on Native American soil. So we have a couple of different departments now under the constitution, no longer the corporation. As I switched, I, I have a CAF number. This means a centralized authorization file. This is how the Internal Revenue Service looks you up under, they have a whole file of you know, all the taxes you paid, mortgages, you know, car loans, anything financial they house it under a repository called a CAF number. So this is the new CAF number that I was assigned, changing my status. And I looked it up to confirm, that's why I highlighted it. Obviously I have my name here. Notice there's a percentage sign by the name, which means in care of. That's a different language they're speaking to me because they're not speaking to my corporate name and CAPS anymore the way they once were because of that delineation. Now notice it says here, you're a Q follower, $17 deducted, zero, number 17, right? <laughs> so the way I look at it is it's almost like in code, President Trump is saying, here's the new treasury department that's going from a collection agency to a repayment or refund agency, 17, zero balance. As a result, you don't owe us any money. That's as close as you're going to get to them conceding the point. So they're winding back what they said I owed to taking it from every aspect of the Fresno Internal Revenue Service to the federal tax court in LA, all the way to the Treasury Department in Texas. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's really kind of what I wanted to show everybody and why people can be wholly and genuinely encouraged with factual information that it has changed. It doesn't matter if the logo still says IRS because it doesn't say Federal Reserve anymore. It doesn't say IRS says Internal Revenue Service. Language means things. We just established that. You can clearly see the game changer that's happening. I, I want your audience and my audience to see that and get wholly encouraged by the changes that are happening behind the scenes. It's pretty amazing that it is 17. Uh, <laughs> that was, that's really a big clue. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, I think that 
it seems to me more of a transition has taken place than we realize and and it's, certainly it's it's not out in the open but if you approach your finances which i have to because i'm i i was owed a bunch of money from some different lawsuits everything fell through and i just have to get by with whatever i have mm -hmm. but if you if you approach the new this as the it the new world has already begun and that we live in a godly world we don't live in a world of arbitrary rules made by parasites if you operate with that frequency it, it seems to me just from my experience that things take a different uh, path that that things work out in ways that are unbelievable so i'm i'm just i i think it's important that we start to develop this kind of uh, extra sense or extra sensibility and sensitivity to the idea that we're already, and it's obvious, I mean, to, to spiritual people, but we're already living in a godly reality. Yeah. And, and the, the parasites are dying off, you know, just like, just like in our bodies, a lot of people with ivermectin and other things have been really conscious of the fact that a lot of disease they're saying is caused by parasites. So to the difference, the discomfort in our lives is caused by this parasitic governmental, economic, educational, pharmaceutical, <clears throat> corporative uh, mess yeah. that we are throwing off the parasites. And the more you live in the light, I mean, I'm, I'm in Arizona, so the light is tremendous. And I, just to, to circle back a little bit, I, 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 I think that I, I mean, I know they're messing with the, with the sun rays a bit. I, I, I can we can see it. We saw it very clearly in New York, but we're also seeing it out here. But I, despite that, I, I, um, I smashed my finger a couple of weeks ago, mm. and I am absolutely astonished at how quickly it's healing. It, without any, I'm not doing. You know, my my uh, partner's like, well, don't you want to? You know, do you want to see somebody? Do you want to do something? I'm like, no, I don't want to do anything. And it's just healing by itself so i i think that it it's very important for people to get out of this kind of fear-based time you know if you don't do this you're going to do that and you you can't afford your groceries and to you know i i i took it upon myself to diversify after the last uh crash i guess in like 2020 i i took all my money out of my retirement account for better or worse, I put you know some into metals. I put some into cryptos. I I spread it out, and right now, you know, I'm I'm seeing that you you have to be fast on your feet, and you have to really believe in yourself. Yeah. You have to do not rely on investment investment advisors. Do not rely on your pension. In my opinion, that you have to take control of your finances, and if you do that, somehow things will work out. That, that's you know my feeling oh 100 and just to you know revisit what you were just talking about um we put on our telegram channel every day from a, a gentleman that we subscribe to on uh, patreon currency 365 he puts out free frequencies that are actually highly effective and uh you know frequency and light therapy as you were talking about are our best natural defenses against whatever the cabal is trying to put out there as they're fading into the sunset, thankfully. Uh, so frequencies are a great natural tool to counteract uh, big pharma, or as we call it, harmakia. Um, they're free and abundant. And also you've talked about this. I would uh, just second this about grounding, you know, on earth and, and just getting, spending time in nature. It's just wherever you, whether it's the beach or a park or your neighborhood, if it's quiet, if you have a cul-de-sac, whatever it is, just get out, get out and spend time with God, spend time in the sun, um, connect with nature literally and physically any way that you can and incorporate the element of frequencies. Uh, we encourage people to take advantage of them on our channel. Uh, they're free to use and they're highly effective. And, and as you said, you know, uh, they work so much faster and more effectively than anything that we could ever, you know, get out there. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, Rite Aid and Walgreens and CVSs are closing up left and right. Interesting. Uh, my my partner and I this just this morning we purchased new shoes that are all leather and have a copper rivet 
on mm. the bottom. So that as we when we walk in nature, right now I'm using the old uh, what do you call those things? Uh, they're like clogs, but um, whatever you call them, the, they're completely made of rubber. Um, Crocs. I, clo what do you call them? Crocs. Yeah, Crocs. I'm using a Crocs that I bought like ten years ago because I, I don't know. You know, I'm just you know I, I don't I don't stress about these things. I should have proper foot gear. We're doing we're going on some really wonderful hikes, and our land is very rugged to put it mildly but uh, i've been going around in crocs but finally you know yesterday i i, I said to my partner i said Let, let's get some uh let's get some real grounding shoes so we can because you know it's good to walk barefoot there's there's a lot of cow cow uh excrement where i live so um you know it's nice to have something on your foot but yeah, uh, yeah i i agree it's and we we um we hustle during the day. We try to get a lot of things done, but at the at the end of the day, we go for a a, a hike in the the, um, the scenery in Arizona in northern Arizona is absolutely stunning. I mean, yeah, you know, you it, it's like right out of a western. It's just you know the the rocks and the beauty, and it's just a magnificent place. And the people really also there's there's a kind of a different aspect to to the people here it's very different and also i i, I would like to say this that mm. in new york city we were living on the beach and we had a kind of a, a a a a clear view of the sky there was chemtrails day and night and i i i would like to say and i i hope i don't you know encourage anyone to do the opposite but we haven't been seeing a lot of chemtrails here i mean we we still see it, what appears to be a kind of a blocking of the sun especially like sunset and sunrise, but we're not seeing the chemtrails that we saw in New York City. Although the one thing that I will say is that there is a, a kind of a mist that I believe the cabal puts into the air. And we are, if you, if you can look at something over a great distance, there's still that kind of, this kind of a chemical gray mist that the uh, cabal seems to be. I think it's a cabal invention that they they seem to be spreading across the country the the only place i didn't see it was in new mexico for some reason i i didn't mm -hmm. see any of that that miss but i do see it here i i guess we're fairly close to las vegas so it could be that they're spraying las vegas with this kind of gas yeah isn't it beautiful those red rocks in new mexico that's just it's it's being a northeasterner myself when i first came out here to live and i'm driving you know we took route 66 i don't know if you did that and you're going through New Mexico and it's just like nothing but open space. I'm like, I am so unfamiliar with this process, like room and nobody's crowding me and on top of me. It's like, wow. And it's just literally, like they say, the land of enchantment, it's just a wide open space. And, you know, we forget that, you know, it's in the media, it's so polarizing the coast, New York or LA. And, you know, you have these large enclaves of people in both respective areas, which I vote none of the above to be either one, as you know, but I've experienced both as you're aware, but we forget that when you get out of those states, which people are doing, there's whole pockets of America that are just wide open and, and there's plenty of land. And it's just that we only hear from the fake news about, oh, you know, it's so overpopulated. Yeah, because you guys want it that way to control the vote and the power because you're part of the CIA agenda. But the rest of the country, the majority doesn't live like that. There's a lot of room and a lot of space. And, um, you know, I, I think it's good if people feel led to, because God is doing a new thing, Eli, not just economically, but he's, you know, moving his people around, whether you're Jew or Gentile, doesn't make a difference, you know, but he's moving his people around the country and around the world for that matter. He's reshuffling the deck so that we can be in the places where we can be of the most use for people. We can use our talents and we can benefit the whole of society collectively. It's a pretty it's an exciting time to say the least. And, and to back you up a little bit, I know that, that everybody is dealing with stuff and struggling in different ways. We, we know that. But if people can work on disciplining, because I deal with this with my, my channel a lot, if we can, people can deal with disciplining their mindset to go beyond what they can see with the physical eyes, but the spiritual eyes and see the bigger picture of things, which I understandably for everybody is not easy to do. I, I get that. I, I'm pretty free of that problem. And I think you are. But not everybody is, but if, but if you can work on that weakness and turn it into a strength, you'll readjust your framework to see something very exciting for what's coming in the very, very near future here um, with respect to your health, your finances, 
your community, um, your talents. There's just so much that's just brimming with nothing but possibilities and optimism. And I'm very much like you, excited about stepping into that and, and, and really using our talents to be to the best benefit of, of the community. Yeah, I, I, I heard this metaphor, and I think it's just absolutely brilliant that in uh, 2020, we were, it was like we were playing musical chairs and the music stopped. And so we all have to find our own place. I mean, I find myself, you know, I, I fled the East Coast, I, 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 for many reasons, but I'm very happy to be uh, in a kind of rural setting in uh, in Arizona. It's, uh, it, this is, I feel this is where my new chair is going to be. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, are you far from Flagstaff, the Grand Canyon? Not far, maybe like 100 miles, uh, 100-ish, 100 plus miles from Flagstaff and uh, and the Grand Canyon. But I, the, the, you know, I mean, my my partner wants to always go to Sedona and, and the Grand Canyon. But I'm like, it's so beautiful here. I, I, I mean, we, we have these kind of red rocks and these formations out here. So it's, I think the whole West... You know, for, as an Easterner, the whole West Coast is, is just absolutely stunning to me. It is, but I would personally, as your friend, recommend you take a couple of days and go to the Grand Canyon because you will yeah, see, yeah. you will see God in a way you never. Yeah, see. It's, it's, I, I've actually, I was awesome. there at, at uh, I think I was like nineteen or twenty years old. I hitchhiked and I, uh, across the country with my uh, banjo. I was a banjo player then, hmm. and. Uh, yeah, we. I stopped it. I I know it is. It is. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm not. I'm not uh, demarking them or demoting them. But sure. I. I also see the value in just appreciating wherever God happens to put you in any particular time. You don't have to travel so far. Absolutely. I'm just saying, if you guys are inclined to take a road trip, it's not. It's you'll be glad you did it. But yeah, back we, warmly, we do because I went last time I was there was 08. I went in, in the end of August, September. And, and they had told us, oh, you know, dress warmly because the temperature shifts. And I thought, oh, I'm in Arizona. It's 120 some degrees. We got there. It was like 40 or 50. And I'm really glad that I brought a change of clothes. So just an advisement. What, what, time, what time of year were you there? It was the it was the very end of August, beginning of September, right around the Labor Day period. Really? In right Sedona around or, or on the Grand Canyon? Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Because it's, it's uh, what is it? Is it? I, I can't remember if I get it wrong, folks, forgive me. I don't have top of my head, but I think it's, I think it's seven or 8,000 feet above sea level. And then you get to Sedona, it's 4,000 right. as you get that decline. So you start to feel the temperature shift as you get uh, to Sedona and to Arizona. But uh, the Flagstaff was with the wind was pretty chilly. Yeah. Flagstaff's about 7,000. My land is around 4,000. So it's the same elevation as Sedona. So we're hoping that we'll have good climate year round. Yeah, you should, for the most part, where you are. Um, interesting little sidebar to the financial side. I took a donkey down at the bottom of the hill because I'm just curious. And I noticed that there were all these security guys at certain checkpoints at these little um, caves or alcoves. And I, I, I was, I'm a curious person. I was like, what are they guarding? What are they doing there? So I started kind of, you know, chumming up to some of the security guards. Hey, how's it going? What are you guys doing? What are you guys guarding there? Fort Knox, ha ha. And the guy said something like that. I said, you wouldn't have gold down there. there was, he goes, I can't talk about it. I said, okay. And then we find out, come to find out, the full credit goes, like you said, to the source, Bix Weir, who has a channel road to Ruta, had, he's on X-22 a lot as well. He had pointed out that they did research that there actually is gold in those caverns, those mountains. It's called plaster gold. And it's some of the, the most gold-rich uh, source that you can find because it's literally like you were talking about you were a contractor right you did construction so i'm sure you dealt with plaster walls so it's the substance of plaster walls but it's literally gold you could peel it off the walls like sheets of papyrus and it's so in demand that presidents have former presidents have tried to get in there and we're not allowed in there because it's it's 24 karat gold it's the, some of the best in the world so now i could understand my intuition was was like, what are they doing over there? And now I understand years later what that was all about. So just an interesting fact to me. I, yeah, I've also heard there are Egyptian, like what we call Egyptian ruins all throughout the Grand Canyon. So it's-, it's Wouldn't surprise me. 
yeah, they're keeping us. They don't want us to understand our our true history. That's that's a whole other. Uh, oh yeah, it's a whole other. We could go yeah. what's in the subterranean Antarctica and all the land that's there that they don't want us to know about. Like when you fly, they won't let you fly over certain areas because they're trying to contain it. So yeah, that's a, that's our show for another time. But uh, always a pleasure, my brother. Um, any last thoughts that you have, and where can people find your work? Um, well, I'm I'm on Rumble. I just got on Truth Social. I'm on X. Uh, the, I think that the most consistent one is really Rumble. Just mm -hmm. if, if you don't remember a Kabbalah guru, just uh, do a search for guru on Rumble and you'll find my uh, my page. But yeah, we're, we're all over the ways, all over the place. And even though I'm not doing live shows or at this moment, uh, we're, I'm putting out almost a video a day and it's sh a shorter video just about certain topics. And uh, but I would just say for everyone, just start to live in the godly world you know it, it it just expand your consciousness and don't try to stay as unafraid as possible it, just know that we're coming into an incredible future absolutely and if i if i can real quick just to back you up um one of my favorite bible verses in this regard is psalm 91 7 in the old testament which basically says a thousand fall at my left ten thousand on my right but your strong arm will uphold me so we can use that as our weapons of warfare to stay guarded and, and positive and know that he's got us, like you said, going forward. So Mr. Eli Weber, good brother Mensch, thanks for being here. Look forward to having you again next month and um, congratulations on the move. Thanks so much, John. I look forward to meeting you in person. Well, hopefully we'll get to do that soon. Very soon, brother. Likewise. Take care. Thanks, John. God bless. God bless.